Merry Christmas, everybody. I think, I think it's fair to say 2020 didn't go as planned. Hey, Beer Geeks, Happy New Year. 2020, mate, it's futuristic as f I've got a really, really good feeling about this year, about this year, about this year, about this year. <laughs> Merry Christmas and welcome to the one tradition we've managed to do year in, year out, which is the annual Craft Beer Channel Christmas video. Now, I think it's fair to say, yeah, 2020 didn't quite go to plan. You've got to look on the positive side, right? Um, you know, I think that we've, we're, we're hopefully growing this community stronger, uh, especially with our Patreon and our launching of the Discord channel for our yeah. Patreon subs. So. It's been a huge success and something I'm really grateful for at the end of the year. Yeah. And it's a really positive place where you can go and talk about beer with no judgment or anything like that. So that's been amazing. And the other thing I've been looking forward to all fucking year is this video. Yes. Because I just want to know where Brad's going to take it this time. Because usually it's like really positive uh, <laughs> railroading of our content. Yeah. Like maybe there's a darker place you're going to take us this year. Maybe it's peat bog mummies, but you know somebody who turned into one. So we're starting with a little Christmas livener. Yes. Technically we've had Gypsy Hill in the Christmas videos before, so they can't be part of it. But this beer is delicious. It's got the most Christmassy can I've ever seen and it's called Snowballer. And it's a Mandarin, essentially New England pale ale. So we're warming up with that. And then we've got five amazing beers that we're gonna be tasting through for the rest of this session. So please make sure you've got a beer in your hands as you enjoy the annual Craft Beer Channel Christmas show. Hey! Social distance hug! Uh. So the first beer is from a brewery we've barely mentioned before on this channel, which is Signature. They yes. have had an amazing year. They've done so much to support uh, musicians during this horrible, horrible year. Uh, so Signature, sort of the idea was that they bring great beer to music venues. Yes. And that's been as tough as it sounds because, <laughs> well, most people just want to drink Red Stripe. But uh, they've done some amazing stuff like uh, they were using musicians as delivery drivers, as canning lines. Were they? Yeah, yeah. That's super cool. When you um, realize that. I know they make loads people. of great sort of collab beers with bands and they stuff. They do, yeah. This one is with The Darkness. It's got the best name out of any of these beers. Bell's End. <laughs> so you should know it. Don't Let the Bell's End is their Christmas song, which I think, although it is pure novelty, is actually quite fun. It's great. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I've just got to go around in my head. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so they've made a classic bitter with the guys from The Darkness. I don't know how many members of The Darkness are actually from back when we used to love them, but was it... Uh, Justin. Permission to Land. Justin was the singer. Permission yeah. to Land was their first album, and it was yeah, fucking yeah. amazing. I think it sold like five million records or there something. There you go. I don't think they'll sell that many of these beers. <laughs> but let's find out. So it's a classic bitter, but I feel like there's Christmas spice there. I don't know whether it's the... Uh, the situation we're in here with your shitty light <laughs> uh, and the Christmas tree. But it's got a festive edge to it, I swear. Maybe some cinnamon or something added in. Mm. Yeah, caramelly, raisiny, maybe a little touch of spice. Come on, have they added spice to this? Wintry and wild, that's all they say about it. That's what I, that's my, uh, that used to be my Tinder dating profile. Wintry and wild. How did that pan out for you? Well, I've got a girlfriend, so... Okay, uh, yeah, sure. A bit well, seasonal, though, isn't it? Like, <laughs> what, what did they do in summer? Oh, in, like, summertime oh, it was, in summertime, it was tropical and fruity. Ah, so you literally base your dating profile on beers that you liked. It's weird how this year bitter has become trendy. It's one yeah. of the trendy styles. Do you reckon? Is yeah. it the year of bitter? I, I mean, it's 2020, if any year. I wouldn't say it's bitter. the year of bitter. Every <laughs> yeah, everybody's be, right? fucking bitter about yeah. it. Yeah. Um, but no, I mean, every time I say it's going to be the year of something, it never happens. Yeah. Like we're great at picking breweries that will be big, but we're not great at picking styles <laughs> that will be big. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't say it was year of the bitter, but you know, we saw Day, we saw Northern Monk in the UK. We see, I mean, Treehouse now have a best bitter, but lovely beer. They said that we've got a four pack of them, so that that that's a Christmas day beer, right there. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. It, it could never live up to the name. Mm -mm. I mean, it's a penis joke. So, you know, they have a lot to live up to. What? So the next beer that we're going to try is, I guess, not technically a Christmas beer, but it's a beer that I have only recently tasted and thought was bloody beautiful. Go on, and I'm that, intrigued. That is the Winterfest beer. Ooh. From Weierstetter. 
Now, Weierstefan are known as the oldest brewery in the world. So you can see on here it says Zeit since 1040. So that's pre Battle of Hastings in the pre, UK. Pre Battle of Hastings. Pre Saxons. However, if you actually look at the history of it, I think there's been a brewery on that site since 1040. 1040. But, you know, I could say that I'm I'm in the oldest house in the world if there's been a house here. But it could just be a modern build over lots of other houses. Anyway, we won't get into that. Blow my mind. They're 980 years old. Yeah. Supposedly. Supposedly. Uh, and this is a, I guess, a, a, a slightly maltier winter lager. Is the idea behind it? You gotta love the fact that the Germans are claiming that they've got a brewery that's nearly a thousand years old. I mean, think of the party in 2040. Mate. I mean, you and me. We're there. <laughs> oh, I yeah, I'm going. I think the craft beer channel might have died by then, but we'll have what? a whale of a time. We're going to have our own sort of QVC style network. Is that, how, is that what this is turning we're into? Flog we're flogging uh, beers. Like you flirting with the camera going, yeah, ooh. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I already do. I'm, this is, I'm just... I'm just sort of uh, learning Comments below, is what Brad does <laughs> flirting? Um, lovely green grass and lemon aroma. Just your classic, your cliche flavour notes for a, for a German lager. I mean, it's, do you know what? There's, there probably is something to this in, you know, like, drink all the really dark, heavy stuff at Christmas time. You need a bit of a palate cleanse. Yeah, but guess the ABV. Well, drink it first, well, then guess okay. the ABV. Tell me if it's going to be your session beer. I mean, that is downable, but I'm guessing it's very high percentage. It's not very high. Six? 5.8, yeah. 5 .8. Pretty close. Okay. So there's a premium. Yeah, it's an export strength lager, a bit like the Augustina Edelstein, which I think is 5.6. 5. 5. You know, from this, I get proper bitter sweetness, like burnt, like a little bit of burnt caramel almost kind of thing, or raisin bread kind of thing, which just makes no sense with the colour. But the actual flavour of it, if you had yeah. your eyes closed, and you drank that, you'd think it was amber. I get that. I mean, it's pretty good considering, uh, I mean, they've had a thousand years to come up with that. <laughs> okay, so if you're thinking that this, you know, this video is Christmassy, but these beers are not, mm. now we're going hardcore Christmas. So, <laughs> this is the White Hags Eggnog Christmas Ale. <laughs> okay. He's listening. Has this actually got any eggnog in it? When you say eggnog, they've just described that it's a drink. They haven't just added eggnog. I Probably it's going to be lactose, vanilla, nutmeg. Barley, barley wheat, lactose, vanilla, spices, natural flavour, reassuring, and yeast. So no eggnog. I can smell it from here. I'm not sure I'm going to enjoy this. Oh, it's... <laughs> Oh Ooh, boy! I'm gonna do a what's this called when you do this? The pass. <laughs> so usually when you do the pass, it's a, a, a technique that you'd use while being a beer judge just to get the absolute top notes. <laughs> it's just, you get everything. This is this is 100% those little milk bottle sweets. It is exactly that. Yeah, 100% milk bottle sweets. That's what it is, right? Ah, oh, it's too sweet. <laughs> I haven't tasted it yet. I hope it's drier than it smells. But it's, it is Christmassy as hell. It's Christmassy slash Woolworths in the 90s. It's, I, I don't know, I mean, it, to me, it does smell a little bit like a snowball, like with Advoca, which is egg-based yeah, as well. Yeah, maybe, maybe. So it's got it's got a little bit of lemony, citrusy note to there, it. There is a citrus note to that as well. Yeah. For sure. Come on then. Let's do it. I feel, I feel a Johnny Rank coming on. <laughs> White chocolate, lemon pith, milk bottles. I don't um, think I can drink very much of that. I couldn't drink a lot of it, but compared to the the Hudson incident, now that is incredibly sweet. I mean, I've got a sweet tooth, Johnny, but I think my last sweet tooth might have fallen out drinking that. <laughs> oh, let's not talk about that. And, and, and the other half disaster. It's not for Johnny. It's not for human consumption. <laughs> that's, that's a very different situation. No, that's on the side of sensible. Yeah. <laughs> I think our bold, context maybe a, is skewed there. Maybe a bold statement. Yeah. Um, it's not too sweet. It smells incredibly sweet, but actually it's drier than I expected. The flavours aren't all out of whack. There's nice vanilla, there's nice lemony kind of notes. Um, there's a nice body, it's relatively crisp. 
that to me is what's right about experimenting in beer because you don't want to drink all of it, but it's a great little bottle share beer. Yeah, yeah, that's Where, a fun beer. That yeah. is a real fun beer. I, I, I think I think they've done that right. The concept was great. The execution was great. Would I go there again? No. What's your favourite Christmas song, Johnny? Mine is Driving Home for Christmas. It's a good one. Because um, I, I had a moment where I got picked up by my dad on, on Christmas Eve uh, many, many years ago, a decade ago now, and it snowed and we got stuck for like five hours, me and my brother and my dad, listening to Christmas songs, and that one, we played it about four times because it was just too to suitable. Just listening to Chris Ray on repeat, yep. whatever his name is. Yep, yep. Driving home for He's Christmas. got other fucking bangers, to be fair to Has me. Has he gone? Yeah. Name. Road to Hell. I'm on the road to hell. <laughs> Sorry, what was your favourite Christmas song? Uh, Mariah Carey, I don't, I don't, all I want for Christmas is you. Yeah, we... we <laughs> Not you, but that's the name of the song. Why not me? I bring all this beer. I mean, like, these yeah, you're, you're great. But, I brought you, know. you a chocolate <laughs> egg. Chocolate egg. Yeah. Got to do that, right? Sorry, downstairs. That's it. Um, oh, oh, it's so satisfying. Rolling your hands around the packet. And what's the best bit of the chocolate egg, Johnny? Calling it an orange? <laughs> Everyone calls it an orange. This is special. We call it's it called, an egg. It's called, it's called a chocolate orange. Come on, that's an egg. If there's ever a chocolate that's Have an egg. Have you ever seen an egg? But it's still, look at the weight of it. That's, that is, that's more egg than a Cadbury's cream egg. The weight of it, mate. That's a living, that's a living thing. That's heavier than an egg. Right. <laughs> I tell you what, Johnny, I'm going to take us off on a tangent now. If you had to... I mean, that wasn't a tangent. I've been holding you... the final beer for about 10 minutes. If you, were, if you were in a fight to the death and you had to choose a chocolate as your weapon of choice... Toblerone. I mean, it would either be a Toblerone or a chocolate <laughs> egg, right? I reckon... I can't believe I had that answer queued up. Caveman style, I could bash, bash your cranium in with this. Dude, it's been a rough year, but, but come you, on. But you could, you could totally bone me with a, with a Toblerone. <laughs> Toblerone me. Toblerone, okay, that's a better. Could, but do you know what? It would. I think a Toblerone would would snap. Whereas this, the integrity, the core strength of this. Okay, I'd freeze my Toblerone. I mean, also, have you ever been like, do you want a bit of Toblerone? And then you try to take off you one can't, segment. You can't do it. It's got to be like two or three or else it just won't come. You don't have the leverage. The, those canny Swiss, they've worked out a way of stopping it from snapping in single bits. So you get through it quicker, you need to buy more. Uh, right, anyway, we're a beer Final channel. beer! We're a beer Final channel. beer! We're a beer channel. So, uh, this is a little flashback to back when we began. So, the first beer I had by Antipatch and Hobday, and we're talking 2013? 20... 13, yeah. 2014? Yeah, 13. Uh, was a Pfeffernusse Saison. Oh, that was good, wasn't it? So, I mean, the fact that people were making Saison in the UK in, in like 2013, 2014 is mental enough. But this year, I don't know whether they decided that Saison isn't cool enough, or mm. whether Stout is a better vessel for the, the ginger, uh, nutmeg kind of flavours that you get from a Pfeffernusse biscuit, which is a German... Yeah, I think we need to tell people about what this is. It's like this thing. incredible little biscuit. Like a Christmas biscuit you might yeah, have with coffee and great. stuff like that. Yeah, so Stout yeah. makes sense. Delicious It's not biscuit. coffee flavoured though. No, it goes you with You might have coffee. it with a coffee. Yeah, yeah. Like you would uh, one of those like caramel biscuits ones. or whatever. Oh, yeah. or like a Biscoff, yeah. Yeah, bisc all Biscoff. Um, so they, they've shifted from a Saison to a Stout. So I'm really excited to see what this is. Because also, um, Antipatch and Hobday, their best beer is their, is their porter. Mm -hmm. So they know how to make a great dark beer. They've, they've got the balance of that down. So let's see if this is a better vessel. And I, I can honestly, it was one of my great beer experiences having their Saison back then. So in my head, I have a really fixed image of like flavour flavour map of yeah, how yeah. that should taste. So we... I've got a good memory of it. Really spicy. Quite earthy though, more nutmeg than cinnamon, I'd say. Mm -hmm. And to me, a Pfeffernusa is, is a little bit more sweet and punchy, but it smells great. And the addition of that kind of roastiness, I quite like. Uh, I miss the Saison Esters, I miss, because Saison can smell quite Christmassy. It can have that cloviness and stuff, which is missing. But maybe on the palate, it's gonna be a better match. Let's give it a go. Give it a go. It's very subtle. It is pretty subtle. Do you know what's interesting? I mean, A, I like that it's subtle, mm. but B, mm. I remember the Pfeffernusa Saison being bold and in my face. So is that my palate changing 
or is that you know like like they've actually dialed it back i think they've dialed it back mate to be honest or you know it, it's more balanced I, within I the, remember it being the confines of a roastier massive mobile when we had that before that is that is uh like you say subtle refined dare i say and quite I think, sensible yeah and i think it's more drinkable for it you know the saison was a bit well, it was daring, wasn't it? It was yeah. really bold. And this one, they've dialed it back. And it, it's a porter with some spices. A bit like, um, well, no, nothing like our home brew that we made, our pumpkin spice one, which had loads of cinnamon and nutmeg in it. That we went really spice forward and probably could have gone a bit further. Here, maybe they've undercooked it, but I quite enjoy that because if I want a couple of them, I want it undercooked. Mm. You know, like a steak, not like a turkey. That's it, that's it. So there we go, another annual Christmas video has come to an end. As my gran used to say, she used to say, Christmas is as far away as it's ever been. And that was how she'd go to bed every Christmas day, and we'd be like, oh. A wise woman. And that's I mean, ultimately she was wise. She quite was depressing. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that is the end of our Christmas video. The one thing we have to do is for Brad to eat a chocolate egg, and for me to hate him one more time for that, and for me to flip this off, uh, and have a little sample of, you know, if the Fefanusa was a little bit soft on your palate, <laughs> our homebrew mince pie double is anything but. Way too roasty, way too bitter, but uh, as a concept, a proven idea. Are oh, you going to eat the stalk in the middle? I'm going for the stalk. The, the, the heart, the there core there we go. of the orange. Cheers. Oh, it's such a good chocolate. My friend, I love you. We love you too. And I'll see you in 2021. Mm. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Merry Christmas.